to somebody that tells you not. I don't know. Chewing out one of my employees for not doing a job because I'd sent an email a week before. And he said, you didn't send that to me. You didn't send it. Yes, I did. We'll look it up. And wrong person. to the wrong area. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. That could happen. Yeah. yeah, but when it does, it's not very fun, Mary. <laughs> but you get a lot we can all have yeah, yeah, absolutely. But if it's sure, an important, important message and thought got about. through to that person and they're not responding, they get all well that's what yeah, that know. happens. But like, with Greg, I usually <laughs> send him <laughs> within an hour. He's like, ah, oh, he's <laughs> just the wrong guy. He knows just the lead. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, sir. Still good. <laughs> She's here. She just stepped down. Stepped down. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> good morning. Nice names. Look at that. Yeah. Wow. It seems like we were just together not too long ago. Yeah. <laughs> According to that, we got two minutes. Is it clock yeah, now to next? Yeah, it's clock to next. It's clock to next. It's clock to next. It's clock to next. It's So this is a people can finish very good show. Here is the expectation of what they can do. Anybody go to the concert last night in Murdoch? What was it? Luke Bryant. Your son feels in town. Oh, you are. Good. 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 Most of it 
that's been picked is for feedlots, wet corn. Yeah. Uh, very few soybeans but going down from Madison yeah, to know. Columbus. They're, they're they're taking it off. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you sit there and man, it's a long time. No kidding, wait a minute. The meeting of the Nebraska Highway Commission is called to order. Before we call the roll, I will note that there will be an opportunity for members of the public to speak at the end of the meeting. It looks like Sarah's out today, so Shannon Ankney, the NDOT Communications and Public Policy Director, is filling in. Shannon, please call the roll. For the record, the State Highway Commission is assembled in the Highway Commission room at NDOT headquarters at 1500 Highway 2 in Lincoln, Nebraska. The date is Friday, September 23rd, 2022, and the time is 8.30 a.m. A copy of the Nebraska Open Meetings Act is posted in the room. Koppel. Here. Bagerland. Here. Curtis. Here. Cox. Here. Hindig. Here. Leaf Green. Here. Wolford. Here. The next order of business is review and approval of the August 26, 2022 meeting minutes. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Yes. Just one. <laughs> Aye. Aye. Uh, she will read the roll. Yeah. Um, Koppel? Yes. Fagerlin? Yes. Curtis? Yes. Cox? I will abstain as I was not in attendance. Hindig? Yes. Leaf Green? Yes. Wolford? Yes. Introductions today, uh, we have Jerry Abel from the Butler Public Power with us. Are there any others that would like to be introduced at this time? If not, we'll proceed with the uh, business agenda. Uh, our director, John Selmer, will have remarks. Thank you, Madam Chair, Commissioners. Uh, doesn't seem like it was too long ago. We were just meeting in uh, Nebraska City, uh, and uh, we had a great meeting there. As you can tell by the weather, it uh, falls upon us, and what that brings is uh, the push to complete our project. So we've got a lot of activity going out there, and tie that with uh, the agricultural uh, aspect of our state. Uh, there's a lot of equipment out on the road. So uh, we as an agency just ask uh, the public to, uh, to be patient. Uh, we'll get through this, uh, and we'll see some good things both in terms of the uh, economy uh, with agriculture and having a nice smooth road, hopefully, uh, in, in the winter time. Uh, we also uh, have a pretty full agenda here, and uh, I think there's gonna be some pretty good presentations on updating on some activities uh, up in Northeast uh, Nebraska in terms of US 275 and, and the Fremont Southeast Beltway. And then Mick will talk about some future work uh, that we're looking at. Uh, on US 77 from Wahoo to Fremont. So uh, 
I think after this, uh, we get all that down. Fremont's going to be in pretty good shape uh, there in terms of uh, the transportation system that they're going to have. I had the opportunity uh, just earlier this week of uh, being out and meeting with our operations and maintenance uh, team. We have an annual meeting uh, in Kearney. I know looking at uh, the past year and in the future uh, of uh, specifically probably uh, uh, more related to winter operations. Uh, uh, as an agency, uh, we have significant vacancies within uh, our uh, yards uh, out there. We're not that much different than private industry in terms of uh, uh, workforce and, and trying to uh, get our <coughs> positions filled. So. We had a good uh, discussion on that. Uh, we believe we're prepared, and we also received, I, I think maybe you can call it good news, from uh, Dr. Anderson from UNL and uh, uh, Meteorology uh, uh, Department. Basically, his uh, uh, prognostication is, is that we're going to have a winter similar to last year. Uh, uh, the feeling at this point is that up until about January or so, It'll be relatively dry, uh, relatively above normal in temps. Uh, most of the storms will be coming out of the northwest. So his uh, perspective on that is they're usually very fast storms that come through. They don't hang around, and they don't bring a lot of moisture. So we'll probably get some cold days uh, in that period, but they'll disappear pretty quick and expect some blue sky clearing, uh, those types of things. So. Uh, once January, February hits, then uh, it, it shifts. Uh, basically, this is what going probably, I think, from a La Nina to an El Nino. Uh, they're starting to see it uh, shifting there that uh, we'll probably start seeing more storms come out of the southwest. But uh, uh, didn't think that we would have any above normal uh, precip, uh, but if it comes out of the southwest, it's usually a little heavier, wetter snow. Uh, but hopefully, not having a lot of snow pack that we're carrying in the early parts of the year, we'll get through that. So uh, we feel pretty good about that. Uh, and uh, hopefully uh, it comes out correct. I mean, we pay him a lot of money to give this, you know, <laughs> zero dollars. <laughs> out there, and he's always willing to come back and take a beating if it doesn't uh, work out as well. Um, uh, another uh, uh, conference that I just came back from earlier in September, and Shannon was there and Sarah was at the uh, Transcom uh, conference in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And that's an interesting one for me uh, because that one, uh, uh, I think I was maybe one out of two engineers. It's a, it's a national meeting with state DOTs with their communications professionals. And so there was a a lot of good uh, uh, techniques that were shown. I don't think we'll do the Shrek uh, dancing uh, over a bridge or anything like that. Shannon's trying to get me to, to get with uh, TikTok and, and do some things like that. That has some other uh, aspects related to the app that uh, is concerning to some. Uh, but uh, it was a great meeting, uh, a, a great time to, uh, to look at how we can improve our communications uh, with the public. Uh, and further engage, and I know Sarah's doing some activities in terms of public involvement and, and really querying uh, uh, communities as to how effective we are, especially in our uh, public involvement meetings, uh, so that we can always get better there. The last thing I'll, I'll stay with, uh, uh, discuss, is uh, uh, Nebraska was one of 35 states that got their NEVI plan approved. That's the uh, National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure plan. Uh, I believe the other ones will be following up here shortly within a week or so, uh, but uh, can, can dig into Iowa. They didn't get theirs approved, so, you know, uh, it's probably because I came over here. <laughs> I don't think so, but uh, it allows us now, uh, we have authority to start uh, utilizing federal funds in this area, uh, and I believe the first year we're looking at about $4 million, but ultimately around uh, a $30 million uh, investment in the state and looking at charging stations uh, throughout the state. So uh, I'll end again with safety. Uh, buckle up, phone down. I believe there's going to be a national effort here, a day set aside that uh, uh, I think a majority of the state DOTs are going to be looking at that. Uh, probably on a negative note, we did get uh, um, 
our information back on a survey of our seatbelt usage, and it took a significant drop. I believe we were sitting at around 81%, something in there, the low 80s, and uh, uh, this last survey showed uh, 76%, so we're not going in the right direction. So we're going to dig a little bit more deeply in that. Uh, we're going to uh, look at uh, maybe different ways of doing some uh, uh, verification and see what's really happening there. But that's not a trend we'd like to see, uh, and uh, hopefully we can... Uh, get that needle going up in the positive direction. And with that, thank you. Thank you, John. Does the commission have any questions of John? Very informally. John, I'm sure it's because of people coming down to the ball games and whatnot, but I've had several people early on ask me what the asphalt strip out here was, but now they're wondering when is that actually gonna start with the installation of that center line Guardrail. Yeah, I think the problem there is is supply chain issues. I, I, I believe there's an issue of getting the high tension cable. And so that's what's holding us up on there. Or we would have probably already had that installed out there. So that's what we're waiting for so that we can get out there and hopefully uh, uh, before winter closes that up, uh, we can do something out there. Any other questions of John? Director, with respect to that NEVA plan, and that funding is the federal government establishing specs or criteria for those charging stations, or is each state going to have different specs for charging? As you know, Tesla has its own, and other EVs have their own charging. Is there going to be ultimately get to be a uniform process? Well, there, yes, there there is guidance. Uh, right now, the focus is really on the interstate system, and the states also had to identify alternative fuel corridors, but I would say initially the emphasis is on the interstate system and then filling in on what we designate as alternative fuel corridors. So right now for us, our alternative fuel corridor besides the interstate is uh, Highway 6, a uh, segment of it in, in Douglas County or so. Uh, so in that way, the states are consistent, but the other states are, are pretty far along already too in, in terms of their investment in as you would expect uh, on either coast, uh, where there's more population density. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dave. Any other questions for John? If not, uh, the next person on uh, the agenda is Rob Davis, the uh, Nebraska DOT District 3 construction engineer, and Rob will be uh, giving us a presentation on US 275 Scribner to West Point update. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Commissioner Gert has said I'm Rob Davis, the construction engineer. And I know there's a lot of public interest in the 275 corridor and what, what we've been getting done on the expressway. So <clears throat> Here to give a little update. Part of this is in District 3. Half of it is in District 2. Is that not working for you? That's not working. Okay. There we go. There it is. Hey, uh, Quick overview. Probably a lot of you have seen this before, but just a reminder for everybody uh, most of the construction through this area is two plus two approach. So we're building two new lanes and utilizing the existing lanes. Uh, of course, the bypass around Scribner is all new lanes, and there's new tr urban transition sections on either end of West Point with no construction in West Point itself. Uh, this was led as four separate projects, West Point North and South, West Point South, Scribner North, and Scribner North and South. In addition, we had two wetland uh, mitigation sites where we had to build wetlands to meet our environmental commitments uh, for these projects. These were also led as two separate contracts 
you can see the locations on the map there. One is south of West Point, the other is a little bit south of Scribner. <clears throat> Both of these sites are completed. And you can see it's uh, well vegetated. This is actually the one south of Scribner. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about the North Three projects because they were led at the same time. They were awarded to the same contractor. So it's a little hard to separate them into individual to talk about. Uh, work began on the West Point North and South and the Scribner North in July of 21. And work began on West Point South in June of this year. Grading and culverts on the project. Grading on all three projects is over 90% complete. And in this particular picture, you can see the black material on top. That's our bituminous foundation course. Uh, a lot of this stretch already has this foundation course, so it's basically ready for pavement. In addition, the uh, first phase of the culverts under the roadway is complete, other than uh, a few median drains in certain areas. As far as bridges, there's one bridge north of West Point, which is complete other than the concrete rail. And we got three bridges that are just north of the Highway 91 junction. Uh, the one on the, the left picture is the Elkhorn River Bridge. Then there's two smaller structures between the river and 91 there. Uh, decks on all three of these are scheduled to be poured in the next month. <coughs> Paving, we've poured some temporary pavement, and just in the last few weeks, we began the mainline paving out there. Uh, what they're paving right now, they're doing a 20 foot wide section, which is the outside lane and outside shoulder. And they kind of come back and do the inside lane and inside shoulder, which is 16 feet. So they've done most of the mainline paving this lane north of West Point and They've been working south of West Point also. Moving forward, uh, contractor plans to finish paving that north of West Point, switch traffic over so they can work on the bridge and culverts in phase two through the winter, and also continue on the paving south, south of West Point as the weather permits. Uh, there's also a possibility that the contractor will be able to place some asphalt on the existing lanes this year under a flagging operation. Otherwise, we'll, <clears throat> as, as we phase through this, we'll mostly be putting traffic on the new lanes and while we fix the old lanes. And we'll have to do the bridges and some of the culvert work in. Okay, the uh, Scribner North and South. This is the one with the bypass. This was actually led in a separate letting than the other three projects. And it was awarded to Graham Construction. This work began in March of this year. And grading culverts here, they're the around 40% of the grading is complete. Uh, grading is a little more complicated in this stretch because it includes reconstruction of the levee system around Scribner. And the first phase of the Culverts have been completed south of the bypass. For the bridges, there are three bridges on the project. The contractor has done some work on all three bridges. And of course, they can continue bridge work throughout the winter. Uh, had uh, John Starr and our drone team get, get some video for us because this is the the stretch of highway that we get out away from the highway, so most people don't see this part driving by. Get this run. Okay, we're kind of coming in from north end, heading south at this point. And just to warn you, the drone has to move move around to stay. It can't fly directly over people or occupied vehicles, so shifts over. <laughs> just a little warning. This is also sped up. The traffic isn't actually moving that fast. <laughs> so here we are kind of coming on to the project. 
<laughs> this is the, the first bridge you can see here. They're working on. Right here is where the we start moving away from the existing lanes. You can see the city of Scribner in the background there. This is the second bridge. This is an overflow structure. <clears throat> and you'll see so there's some stretches in here where we haven't done a lot of the grading. We've done the, the clearing, but a lot of these sections involve the, the levy system. And we have to keep the levy to the system intact during a construction, of course. Make sure we have that protection for the city. We're getting into a lot of the stretch that we have a fair amount of the grading done. And you can see again those the construction vehicles aren't moving that fast, but you can see that there's a lot of trucks hauling right now. Here we're approaching the existing lanes again. You can see some of the culvert pipe for this stretch has been delivered, so ready to go when we're ready to put them in. And once we get south of the bypass, you see that the new lanes are gonna be on the east side of the existing lanes. This is one of the box culvert structures that's been completed there, working on backfilling it. This is the last bridge on the project. See all the equipment around there. Contractors working on it. This stretch is where the gradings basically complete. Culverts are complete. Of course, as you get, get into the, this transition, we'll have to, you know, once we get, get the pavement on here, here we'll have to get traffic switched over to new pavement so we can do this transition on the south end to the existing four lane. So moving forward on the, this project, I continue, the contractor continues work on the bridges, culverts, and grading. Uh, if John's weather forecast is right, we should be able to get a lot more done. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the contractor's plan actually shows that they'll begin concrete paving in early November. So, so if we get an early winter, we probably won't see a lot of paving this year. Are there any questions? No questions, but Rob, congratulations. You're getting a lot of positive feedback from the citizens that go up and down that road system. I, I hear it at least once a week, if not four or five times a week from people that are using it. They're seeing the progress and they're really complimentary that it's 
happen and I think everybody's doing a good job. So congratulations to you and your team. Thank you. Any other questions uh, from the commission? I have a question, Rob. Um, tell me again how many miles of roadway this uh, project contains so and do you have a projected time of completion? <clears throat> this is about 18 miles total. Uh, and the projects up by West Point, the scheduled completion will be in 2023. And the two sections around Scribner, the scheduled completions are 2024. Thank you, Rob. Are there any other questions? No, thank you for your presentation. Next speaker on the agenda is Barb Cavino Bevins. Yes. Uh, she is the Nebraska NDOT uh, District 2 construction engineer, and she will be presenting Fremont Southeast Beltway construction update. Barb? Good morning. Again, I'm Barbara Gravino Bevins. I am Rob's counterpart from District 2, which is Omaha area and some surrounding counties. I'm here this morning to give you an update on the Fremont Southeast Beltway. And just like the name says, it's located south, southeast of Fremont. And we'll connect Highway 77 to Highway 275. And so I don't have quite as formal a presentation, but John Starwith, our drone group, went out and flew the project. And so I'm going to take us through the video and point out some items and then talk about some milestones. All right, so here we're starting at the <coughs> west end, looking directly north into Inglewood and Fremont. The active lanes there are Highway 77. <coughs> the tie-in at this location will be one of the final acts of this project. The roundabout coming up connects the old road to the new road and also maintains access to Dove's Cove to the south, near the Platte River. And there you can see the, um, it's not showing up on the screen, but that's a temporary road there crossing, keeping access to Dove's Cove. Here's a stretch of mainline pavement. You can see the sand piles there on the pavement that's destined for the median to be underneath the median surfacing. That intersection coming up is for Hills Farm Road. It's on the left side and the north side and keeps access to the south side. This bridge location is over BNSF Railroad. Here you can see the girders are in place and they're actually starting to place deck pans. And once they place those deck pans, we will pour the concrete for the deck. We're hoping to do that mid-October. And here we have a very long stretch of completed pavement. We have really good ve vegetation along the roadway. And it's very smooth. Here we're looking kind of east-southeast. The roundabout coming up connects the new roadway to 23rd Boulevard and Downing Street. It's actually partially open to traffic right now to keep access to Downing Street going south. If you look hard, you can see some of the barricades on the existing pavement keeping tra traffic out of sensitive locations. Coming up, we have a section of completed pavement, and they're laying out the topsoil here. <clears throat> Once the contractor is done laying out the topsoil, we will seed it, and then that section will be done. Lots of topsoil. Yep, here we're going to turn and go almost directly east. This bridge coming up is complete. It goes over the UP Railroad 
an old US 275. And it is complete, but we did have some blockouts in there. You can see that we're going to be adding drainage facilities for later. Coming up, the next intersection there is the paved access that connects a new roadway to old US 275. And there in the photo, you can see some kind of dust blowing. I think they were doing some joint work or cleaning there at that point. This is the end of the mainline paving. We have since put in more mainline paving since this video was taken last week. Coming up is the east end of the project. <clears throat> this is the interchange with US 275. It has two teardrop roundabouts, and here you can see them treating the subgrade. Now, um, we have had some issues with a regional cement shortage that have disrupted the schedule a bit. And what has happened is, while we seem to have plenty of cement for paving, we don't have a lot of cement for the subgrade preparation. And so we're working through those issues to find a different product to use. We're leaning towards lime right now. But as a result, we were hoping to get this done quite a bit early. I can say probably with certainty that this will be open this spring. There was a possibility it could be open this fall. Uh, there still is a small possibility, but we'll have to see what happens with those materials for this upgrade. Yep, the tan stuff is the subgrade, and the black is the topsoil. The end of the project was scheduled for June of next year. One way or another, we are still ahead of schedule. Thank you, Barbara. Are there any questions uh, from the commission? Just one, you started on the west end and you showed us that large roundabout. Yes. And this kind of ties into the next project that's gonna be presented that 77 from Fremont to Wahoo. Is that where, when they do the four lane from Wahoo toward Fremont, is that then where it will bleed into that roundabout and then you'll go up 77 at the roundabout or will 77 be taken four lanes all the way through and bypass the, the, the roundabout. Oh, 77 will go into the roundabout. Okay. And 77 will go into the roundabout. Uh, I was just curious, thanks. Yep, and then 77 will actually become the new roadway. And then <clears> the road going into Fremont and Inglewood is actually a new spur, yeah. a very short spur. Not the shortest, but very short. So travelers from the north on 275 as they approach Fremont, if they want to go to Wahoo, they'll probably take the 275 around and then catch this bypass and then go 77 south off the bypass. Yeah, that's the intended one. traffic flow. Yeah, that's one option. Thank you. Are there other questions for Barbara? No, thank you so much for your presentation. It looks like there's a lot of progress. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, Graham has the project. They're doing a very good job. It's good to hear. Thank you. Our next presenter is uh, Mike Sislo, and he's the um, NDOT roadway design engineer, and he's going to update us on the US 77 Wahoo to Fremont. Mike? Good morning. Uh, Mick Sislo is my name. I'm, I'm the roadway design engineer. Um, Commissioner, thank you for having me. And uh, commissioners and John, thank you. And uh, so today, like uh, we discussed earlier, I'll be talking about Wahoo to Fremont. Um, it's kind of some exciting news, I hope, that uh, we have several uh, projects that I'll be discussing today that kind of tie into the whole corridor. And uh, so let's get started. Um, with what we have here, we'll start off with a little explanation and background with our expressway system. Um, we'll talk about the 2 plus 2 approach that you kind of saw with what we were doing at 275. And then we'll actually get into the 77 corridor in the time. So 
With the expressway system, as you're all aware, um, we we'll continue to make progress at, um, along the state with our four lane facilities. Um, there's quite a bit of work being done throughout the state on various segments, whether it's on a study that's being done on 81, um, Highway 30, 275, and now we have this corridor here in which we're trying to continue to uh, um, complete the expressway system. Um, approximately, we have about 100 uh, miles left to do on it, and uh, so we'll talk about the 69 and a half miles. The legislature, you know, developed this back in 88. We continue to, to move um, and we want to make progress to regionally connect our system, connect, connect our communities, uh, to make sure that um, we have a convenient way to travel across the state. We want to reduce our delays as we travel across the state and we want to maximize our transportation system with the existing um, assets that we had out there as well. So in doing that, that really brings us to why we continue to look at the two plus two approach. Um, and it's with this that, that we look and we try to maintain to these criteria as we uh, look at these projects like, like this one here. Um, we want to utilize with this criteria that the existing lanes remain in place as much as possible. We want to uh, preserve that asset and utilize that asset. Um, so we typically resurface um, the existing lanes. Uh, the new lanes then are offset on either side in which then we construct those brand new pavements. Um, the goal is to stay with this concept, to minimize um, impacts to the, inf the existing infrastructure and then obviously uh, analyze a balance of the system of where we need to, which side we need to go to. And so this is just kind of a brief typical to this. I know this is not a new concept to you. Um, it's something that we can change march forward with. That asset that we have out there today is uh, an asset that we do want to utilize. And so we stress that very heavily that that's why we try to do this versus going completely off alignment. Um, it aids in, in cost, it aids in constructability, and uh, then also it aids in uh, utilizing that asset for a longer period of time. Just another quick shot of what we do for two plus two, where we built outside um, adjacent to the existing. So let's jump into the 77 corridor. So what we'll be talking about today is from the Wahoo, from uh, where we currently have a junction of 109 South and come around to the east and up to the north where we tie into the project you just saw. Um, with this particular project, then this is about 16 and a half miles. Um, it's east of Wahoo from that reference post 95 to reference post 111. These are the projects we have programmed in the area, and we'll cover these just because they're all kind of tied to what we're doing here. Um, we have a maintenance project that's scheduled at the top line. We have a Wahoo, Wahoo intersection uh, that's scheduled as well, and these four-lane proposal expansion projects that are broken into three segments. We have a big timeline that we'll march through, and we'll just kind of step-by-step step kind of get through what we believe uh, is a good schedule for all of us um, to deliver all these projects. We'll start with the Wahoo East maintenance project. The pavement along this segment, if you've driven it, um, is in need of some work um, and needs to be maintained until we can come in with these four-lane um, expressway um, systems. So as of right now, we have a product that we're looking to deliver next year, um, early in the year, and hopes to have it constructed. Um, it is a very thin strategy to maintain the roadway um, while we're preparing for the rest of the project. Sorry, I skipped ahead then. But <laughs> um, so it is looking at where we're trying to get that out the door and constructed next year to maintain the existing main lines. It's basically just between the white lines to preserve the pavement. The next project we'll talk about is the intersection. This one that you're probably very familiar with. What we are currently proposing a roundabout at the 109-77 um, intersection just on the northeast side of, of Wahoo. Um, as you can see here, the proposal right now and it's being designed is to look at um, a slight shift in the, in the footprint down into the uh, southeast um, corridor. Um, we're trying to avoid some of our resources out there, the lake and the dam, and as well as the, any impact that be along the airport. This roundabout is being designed to accommodate the future four lane. Um, it will basically have a, from a conceptual point, we have two through lanes that go through the roundabout um, 477, and then 103 will have single lanes coming <coughs> into it. And that is right now being slated for construction in 2024. So maintenance next year, construction of the roundabout the year after. We bring to the project that I guess the, probably the main focus of today's conversation is the study. We have an RFQ a request for qualifications out for a consultant firm to come in and do this study for us. Um, that's currently on the board, being put, or it's posted. Um, it'll close next month, and so we hope to have a selection then made by late next month and to get the study started. With that study, they'll be collecting data, looking at alternatives, um, as we discussed for the two plus two concept. 
as we develop that strategy, then we'll talk about the four link projects as they progress and then the time. So the corridor study itself, um, obviously there's a lot of alternative analysis that, that we look at when we go into this left or right, safety improvements, correcting deficiencies, drainage, bridges. Um, we have to keep in mind uh, minimizing our environmental impacts. We will have railway impacts no matter which side we stay on. And then obviously they'll be developing uh, further cost estimates for our strategies. So we have done some previous um, feasibility study so that we obviously need some approach to going forward. So with our feasibility study, the very high level study that we look at just so we have a, a concept of funding and, and potential impacts um, that lead into this study that's going on or that will be going on soon. So right now with that feasibility study, it looks um, as we anticipate for the first package to come out of Wahoo, out of that roundabout, would be on the south side of the existing alignment. Um, that package there would then would be about a $24 million constructive package. We come around and start heading from me north to Fremont. We would be anticipating a two packet um, delivery there. The first packet would be from the Mead to the N64, and that's going to be about 33 million, and that would be constructed to the east side of the existing lanes. N64 to Fremont also would be constructed then on the east side of the, the new lanes would be constructed on the east side of the, of the existing lanes, and that is about $38 million construction package. So that being said, there's your costs. Um, those two, if you add in there the, the PE, the CE, and the right of way, um, we get to a total plan package of about $117 million for this corridor. I'm going to slide it one. I'm going to go back one slide here for this one. Um, this is our timeline for it. I <laughs> apologize I didn't have that at the end. Um, so as those were being developed, those three projects that we're looking at and talking about were would be developed potentially over the late 23 through 27 type of time frame. We anticipate that um, the earliest possible construction will begin um, in early 27. That's um, subject to funding. All these projects that I've discussed today are state funded projects. And so um, as we move into funding those four lanes, we'll be looking at TIA and BNA uh, funds and um, availability as we get to, to deliver it. Our, but our point is to keep these projects going, get them into a deliverable package so that we have that potential to, to start construction. Any questions? Are there any questions from the commission? Chris? Explain again, you, already, you said you already know which side you're putting the lanes on for the two plus two and everything. What is the purpose of the study that you're letting out now if you've already selected where the lanes yeah, are so going to go? Again, they haven't been selected. So when we do it, obviously we have the feasibility, we have to come out and you have to kind of know an estimate of the cost and so the impacts. And so um, there's a lot of engineering that still has to go into it, a lot of intersection improvement that has to be analyzed, um, especially when we get to some of these intersections. Um, the pointers. Uh, but if when you talk about the Mead intersection itself, there will be a safety improvement project needed for that itself. And so some of those need to be further engineered. Um, as far as our, our high level analysis, we just, um, we're really looking at a LEPTA. So we look at our LEPTA, we're basically looking at our least environmental impacts alternatives, and that really sets the tone for what alignments we're looking for. And so with wetlands, we have a cemetery, those kind of drove this initial concept so that we could get an estimate just so as we um, start planning our funds for the next few years, and we, we have something to plan off of. Are there other questions from the commission? No. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, for those of us that don't necessarily live and drive in the different districts, it's really good to uh, see and hear about what's going on in, in the various districts across the state. And, uh, thank you very much. The next part of our agenda is the public input. Are there any letters for the record, Jen? No letters. No letters. Um, the next we have public presentation for those here attending the meeting. Um, please come up to the podium and spell your first and last name for the record before speaking. Do we have any presenters from the public? Seeing none. Uh, we'll continue uh, with remarks from the chair. Um, I certainly appreciate the um, 
buckle up, phone down uh, campaign that you're doing, John. I think uh, I see it popping up here and there. It's probably not as widespread yet as you would hope that it might be statewide, but I think you're really making pre progress. In fact, I noticed on some of the uh, University of Nebraska football commentary, you see that if you look at the backdrop, it's the uh, phone down, buckle up, phone down. So you're making progress. I also enjoy some of the uh, uh, presentations you see from time to time that I guess you could, lack of a better word, an ad you see on TV. And some of those are really well done and thoughtful. And I would like to note those also. Yeah, I think we're trying to get stickers on the helmets too. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. <clears throat> right alongside the end. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. Well, as you know, at, uh, this time of the year is harvest, and you see some pretty big equipment moving down the highways, and that this certainly becomes a safety uh, concern. Some uh, of the public that don't particularly live in the rural areas, they come up on these uh, slow-moving vehicles with wide uh, combine heads and uh, various equipment, and uh, that definitely is a, a safety issue. Also, the weather is uh, good for a lot of construction to continue, so you see uh, all kinds of trucks and vehicles concerning the projects that we have here going in the, not only Eastern Nebraska, but all over the state. So with that, I would uh, continue to um, say safety is really a big issue. It's, it's kind of uh, hard to hear that the uh, seatbelt usage has declined a little bit because uh, as we all know, it's statistics have proven that safe uh, seatbelts do save lives. and. Uh, and as you've seen, I don't know what our fatality rate is at this point, but I know it's higher than it was last year. Where do we stand, John, on the fatalities? Yeah, I think we're still significantly higher than we were last year. It's tapered a little bit, but uh, we're not where we want to be out there. So I think the last I heard was 124, but we're probably higher oh, than no, that. Oh, no, I think uh, this morning, I think it was almost close to 190 or to 188 or something like that. So. Yeah, that's uh, definitely something very worrisome. Uh, and sometimes uh, as you're driving on the busier parts of the highway, you can tell that uh, there's a few folks out there just not paying attention. So I think that kind of puts us in a defensive mode because uh, you can't assume that everybody is uh, following the rules. Well, the issue is, you know, the traffic's back out there, but we still got people driving uh, 100 miles per hour plus and... Uh... Uh, I'm sure any of us driving out on the, on the interstate system have seen erratic behavior. And, uh, you know, so we just got to keep our awareness. Uh, be patient. Uh, don't use your vehicle as a time machine. Uh, you know, plan plenty of time. You'll get there. Uh, it's not worth the extra few minutes uh, to have something tragic occur. Very true. Thank you, John. Are there any closing remarks from the commission? If not, we will have the public uh, meetings calendar. Shannon? NDOT will hold a public meeting for the Red Cloud project from 4 to 6 p.m. on September 29th, 2022 at Red Cloud Community Meeting Center in Red Cloud, Nebraska. And the next scheduled Highway Commission meeting is December 9th, 2022 at 8.30 a.m. at NDOT headquarters, 1500 Nebraska Highway 2 in Lincoln, Nebraska, this room. Shannon. If there is no other business to come, to come uh, before the commission, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.